All right. Uh, here I want to talk about soft clothes. So if I was in a group setting, I would say, what's a soft close? I would ask, I would ask the guys, the gals, I'd have them raise their hand. I'd go around and I'd say, okay, um, what is a soft close, right? Uh, a soft, there are hundreds, thousands of soft closes. Um, a soft close is a tiny little commitment or something that they're proactively doing to, to progress along. And, they, and the cool thing with the soft close is they oftentimes don't realize that they're, they're actually buying the product. For example, uh, you knock on the door, right? You, the first thing you want to do in that first second is you want another second, and then you want another five seconds, then you want another 10, another 20, another minute, and, and so on. You just want to buy time. Buying time is a soft close. So one of the first ones is, is breaking their preoccupation. You have to get them to stop what they're currently doing, or at least to, you let them keep fixing their car, right? But you, you let, at least allow them to talk to you, right? So they can, they, or you can at least start to talk to them, get to know them. Uh, that's a mini soft close in and of itself, right? So the, 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 the sale is, is accumulation of soft closes. Um, from the time you knock on their door, till the time it's installed. Everything in the process is one little soft close. So I, if I were to go through a couple, uh, some kind of pointers, because for me, the way I sell is I have to have it make sense in my mind and I have to have steps. So when I'm at a point, and we all get to this point where we're, we're pitching them on the door and it's like, ah, where do I go next? You know, I, I refer to it as your wheels are spinning, right? You know, you've already kind of talked about this and you've already, gone here and they're still like kind of stone faced, right? And you don't really know where to go. Uh, I think if you have steps developed and everyone's are different, but if you have steps developed, what, what, what I, what I, what I found to be effective is, is if, if I find myself repeating the same thing over and over, then that's the indication. That's a trigger that I need to do one of two things. I need to ask a question. So it's almost like you're in a volley. It's a, it's tennis, right? And the ball keeps it, it's in your court and you're just, uh, you're just trying to hit it back and you're, you're getting tired and you, you, know, you know that at any point you could lose the deal. You need to hit it back into their court. And when you do that, you need to set, right? So you get ready and, and it gives you time to, to recover. Get, so you ask a good question, right? Ask, what's it asking a good question is going to do? First thing it's going to do, it's going to take the pressure off of you. Okay, now the ball's in their court. You're going to ask a good question. The second thing it's going to do, which is kind of counterintuitive, uh, a lot of us as salesmen think that the more we talk, the more we develop trust with the homeowner. It's actually the other way around. The more they talk and the better you listen, the, the, the better they're going to trust you, right? So uh, all of us, you know, right now you could think of off the top of your head, uh, you know, in your life, who's a good listener? Bam, they come out to your head. Your mom, your brother, your sister, your best friend, your neighbor, your whoever, right? Uh, you, everyone knows and respects good listeners. It's a, it's a huge quality, especially in sales to have, is to be a very good listener. You look them in the eyes, you agree with them, you go with it, uh, because the more they talk and they more, the, no, the more they know that you actually care, that they're actually developing trust in you. You don't have to say much. You just, you kind of get them going. Uh, that's the first thing, you're gonna develop trust if you can get them talking. The second thing you're gonna do is it's gonna give you time to regather and regroup and to, to plan your next attack, right? So, okay, now the ball's in their court. I can take my breath, I can get, I can get steady. I'm gonna let them talk for a second, and, and this is gonna give me time to, to kind of, I need to go this way, I need to go that way, or maybe one decision is, I gotta cut it off, these guys aren't gonna do it, right? Because one of the decisions we make as salesmen is to know when to cut it off. The best guys are really efficient. They're really efficient at picking homes, they're really efficient at cutting to the chase, right? So you want to find out if they're the homeowner soon, because if they're a renter and you've been there 10 minutes, that's not going to do you much good, right? So you, so you, want, to, you want to get questions that are going to help you narrow it down uh, to what you need to hit on. And then kind of the third thing, which doesn't always happen, uh, Tracy, Brian Tracy refers to this as the Freudian slip. Um, I guess Sigmund Freud came up with this. But it's, it's uh, if you get them talking about something, there's a chance that they're going to say, you know, give you a little nugget that you can that you can almost exploit, so to speak, right? Uh, an example that um, it, that I've I've shared before is is I was selling alarms in Houston, and I went to this guy's house. He didn't, he couldn't give a crap about an alarm, uh, it, it, and you know it didn't matter if I what was going on in the neighborhood. It didn't matter. 
you know, the kind of house he had. He, he just wasn't worried about it. And then as I, and, and I was losing it, I was, I was, ah, I didn't know where to go. I tried to go down, you know, maybe the, you know, he need, he wanted fire protection or he wanted this. He just wasn't too worried about anything. And as I was talking to him, I noticed a guitar on the wall. I'm like, hey, you play guitar. He's like, yeah. Oh man, he's, he's like, oh, I got, I got, I got a collection. You want and, and he invited, I'm like, well, let me see it. I go inside his back room. He's got like 15 collection, collected guitars on the wall, a couple signed. It's like his baby. He could give two craps about his house, but he, that room was everything to him. And so he wasn't worried about the front of his home or the side of his home getting broken into. But he was, but all of a sudden when I got in that guitar room, that was his hot button. That was his baby, right? I would never have known that he had a guitar room if I hadn't got him talking, gotten in the door, seen a guitar on the wall, built a little bit of trust. He wasn't going to show some random stranger a guitar room the second I knocked on his door, but I talked to him. I got to know him. I built some rapport. And, and before you know it, I'm in his guitar room and it's like, bingo, this is what this guy cares about. And I was like, I was like, man, what if, you know, then you just paint the picture. What if someone came in? What if they, what if this room caught on fire? What if you're, you came home and your guitars were gone? Right. And it was like light bulb went off and it became the easiest sale I've ever, one of the easiest sales I ever had. Once I realized what his hot button was and it was kind of his Freudian slip. Basically, if you, you know, the more you get them talking, sometimes they're going to drop something on you that, oh man, that, that's, uh, that's kind of a game changer. So. Uh, an example, you know, in, in selling maybe in a market like this where where uh, there's a lot of savings, you know, you ask them a couple how long you lived here, um, how's the neighborhood, you know, do you guys have a pool? Yeah, but we don't use it. Oh, why not? Oh, because it's so expensive. Oh, bingo! Uh, I just now I just got a little whopper that I didn't know of before, right? So uh, getting them talking is a huge thing, and that's going to help you advance it. So so back on on, on the soft closes. So. So what are a series of soft closes? Um, asking questions and getting them talking, that's a soft close, right? Now, again, it, you don't wanna spend 30 minutes talking about their truck, right? And, and, you know, but at the same time, you know, ask about their truck, ask about their likes and their, their wants, but, but, you, you, know, but you, want, you need to build rapport, but you also still gotta to get to the point. So I would say uh, kind of a general thing in, in a soft close would be, one is you know, getting in the house, right? Um, that you know you don't always have to do that but a lot of guys you know that's important to a lot of people why is getting in the house important uh, well primarily is once I'm in the home I'm not leaving really until I have a site survey commitment out of them right so if I can get in the house it's a lot easier for them to kick me off their doorstep than it is to kick me off their couch right because I'm gonna be pleasant I'll be I'll be I don't care what they're doing. If they're cooking, I'll go cook. No big deal. I just got to take a note or two, whatever, right? Getting in the house is a soft close. Uh, having them get their power bill is another soft close, right? So, you know, so grabbing their bill, um, you know, and then, and then, you know, grabbing their bill, um, you know, that, that there's one right there. Uh, maybe moving them around a little bit. So if you're at the door and it's kind of stale and you know it's sort of stale, then it's probably, it's probably, there's a signal, there needs to be a trigger that something's gotta change. I either gotta ask a question or maybe I get a movement, right? Where's your meter? Oh, it's over here. I wonder if, is it, is your breaker, is it a 100 or a 150 or, uh, do you mind if I look at it? I don't care what it is. Really, I really don't. The site surveyor's gonna figure that out. But, but if I can get them, yeah, sure. So they, all of a sudden I got them out of the house and we're walking around to the side of the home and now there's some motion. Motion is gonna create energy, right? So you, and it's gonna change a dynamic. So now I got them moving. Um, how's your roof? You know, step back into the front. Okay, yeah, that roof looks pretty good. How long you guys had it? Right, now I'm asking a qualifying question about their roof. Again, it doesn't really matter to me in the process. They're gonna determine that. CAD, site survey, or someone's gonna figure that out. But at the same time, I'm asking them, I'm asking them a buying question, a qualifying question, uh, along those lines. How long, you know, how long have you lived here? You guys are the homeowners, yeah. Okay, good. So asking questions, can, you know, can I see your bill? Do you mind if I step in your home? Uh, once you get a few of these down, then you're moving it to the next step. So every person comes up with their own, own ways. I think it is important though to have it built out in your mind. When I first started selling, I put on a, on a, on a street sheet, I wrote down, you know, uh, four, five, six questions that I could fire off at any time. Uh, 
any time throughout the sale, I can just boom, just fire one off, and that's just hitting the ball back. That's giving me a second to recover. So, uh, you know, how long you lived here? Um, you know, what, what condition is your roof? Uh, do you do you guys have a pool? Um, you know, a number of things, right? You, you can you should go down several different roads with it, but just open-ended, kind of easy questions that you can have follow-ups to. Even if it's a yes and no, you can have a follow-up to that question. Uh, so the soft close, uh, one thing that we that, that I emphasize big, I think is important, is that um, we ask these qualifying questions, and then a lot of times, if at any point they ever ask you a question, that's gold right there. Because them asking you a question is a huge signal that there's actually some buying interest here. Because a question, you know, I mean, and if they're saying, well, can I have a card? You can, you can play that one off. But, but like a legitimate question, so, you know, so how many panels would I need, right? It's a good question. Um, I actually don't know, but I can find out. And so what we do is we have a guy come out, he checks out your roof, we look up your usage, and then we make a design. There's no pressure, it doesn't cost anything. And if we can get a design, then what I'll do is I'll come back here in like a week or two, we'll sit down, I'll go over it, and I'll tell you exactly, yeah, I don't know, you probably need, how high's your bill? Oh, okay, you might need, yeah, you probably need like 20 or 25 panels, but I actually don't know. And so, but what we can do is, is with every house, what we do is we have someone come measure, and then we have an idea. Oh, okay. And if they bite on it then, it's like, you know, Finish it out at that point. I mean, at least finish out the site survey part. And then you go into, uh, you know, what I'll do next is, is on a tie down. Um, but, but again, a series of soft closes. The site survey itself is a soft close because you, they're committing to someone coming to their home. Time is a soft close. If you can go two days and they still haven't canceled, they're actually somewhat being closed in that time. Um, and the site survey comes and it's completed there was enough interest or enough value, as I, as I went over last time, there's enough value there that exceeded the risk where they didn't pull out and cancel out altogether. Uh, they felt like there was enough for them to go on. And so I think, uh, you know, knowing that, that creating, knowing that there's enough value that's been created and, and, and doing soft closes is, is an important thing in the process. And just consider that anything, getting past five seconds, getting past, you know, 15, 20 minutes into it is a soft close. Uh, when I usually do signatures, the first signature I try to get is the NEM. Why? It's easy. It's not even Vivint's fault. It's not Vivint's signature, right? It's the utility company. If I go for the NEM signature and they balk and they, oh, no, no I'm not, then you know they're not ready. You kind of, it's kind of the litmus test. You took a little dip and you, uh, uh, they're not ready yet. Okay, that's fine. Don't let it freak you out. Just back up. It's not a big deal. You went for it, they weren't ready, okay, back out a little bit, go in another direction, and then, and then you know, try to, you haven't built enough value, and that's okay, right? Some customers are different, some are easy. And, and the crazy thing is, sometimes with the easiest customer, when they, you think they're, they're just a lay down and they're at the door, and you know, you, you go for the, the NEM signature, and it's super, sometimes you have to almost, you know, hold back a little bit, and not just boom, 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 go, go, just plow through it because they were easy. Because sometimes you leave and they're like, "Wait, I didn't even what? What was that all? What did I just sign? What was that all about?" Now they're reading it. Now they're going online and they're asking their friends. Whereas you didn't have a chance to kind of cover what this actually is. And so you know, you'll get a feel for that with time. Uh, but I think it's that's something that we, you know, you acknowledge as a salesperson and you get a very good idea of where they're at based on questions and based on you know, the small steps and the soft closes that you do throughout the process.